Following the requests for a video on how I've been doing the chemical blacking, I reached out to the company that makes the kit that I've been using. They very kindly sent me a new kit so that I can show you what's in it and how the process works. And if you're interested in getting one of these kits for yourself, then I've also negotiated a little discount that you can get and I'll talk to you about that a little bit later in the video. The kit comes with the four chemicals that you need to do the process and a well-written set of instructions and some safety information as well. And this is what we're going to black. It's a toolmaker's clamp that I made when I was back in college and as you can see it's got a little bit rusty because it's not got any protection. The chemical blacking will protect it from any future rusting. Now I should point out that chemical blacking only works on iron and steel. It doesn't work on things like stainless or aluminium. For those materials there are other processes. Blacking is quite clever. Because it's a chemical process it doesn't affect the size of the part. So unlike things like electroplating where you're depositing a thin layer of additional material on top of the part which is going to change its size, blacking doesn't do this which makes it ideal for things like threads which is why it's so common on nuts and bolts. The first step is to clean off any old rust. To do this I've just given the part a light draw filing and a clean up with some Scotch-Brite. For doing the blacking you'll need some additional containers. For small parts I find that things like yoghurt pots and ice cream containers are ideal and they're really good because they've also got sealable lids that you can put back on afterwards. You'll need five containers. One for water, which is a wash bath, and then one each for the four chemicals, the degreaser, the conditioner, the blacking solution, and the dewatering oil. I like to number and label them to help keep things organized. The first step is to put the parts in the degreaser for a minimum of five minutes. The parts with holes in, I've threaded onto some steel wire to make getting them in and out a little bit easier. A little bit of light agitation will help the cleaning process. After the five minutes are up, the parts can be removed from the degreaser and placed into the water bath. Since this is a chemical process, it's really important to rinse the parts thoroughly between each step. This will prevent the cross-contamination of the chemicals and make sure that the process works correctly. A little bit of light agitation in the water bath helps to remove all traces of the degreaser. With the parts rinsed, it's time to put them into the conditioner. The job of the conditioner is to prepare the surface for the blacking process. Now, this is really important. The parts need to go in the conditioner for a minimum of one minute and a maximum of two minutes. If you leave them in too long, then you end up with a really patchy surface finish. Just like the previous step, once the time's up, they come out of the conditioner and they go straight into the water bath for a rinse. With the second rinse complete, it's into the blacking solution. The parts typically need to spend about two to three minutes in the blacking solution. The more parts you do, or the larger the surface area of the part, the faster the active agent in the solution will be used up, and the longer you'll need to leave the part in the solution to achieve a nice uniform opaque finish. Here are the parts after one minute in the solution. You can see that they've started to turn black, but they're a bit patchy and there's a light area in the centre of the part. They need to go back in for a little bit longer. Two minutes now, and that light area has almost disappeared. Just another minute and they should be perfect. Three minutes now and the parts are black, so it's time to transfer them into the water bath for a final rinse. The blacking solution alone won't prevent the parts from going rusty. That's the job of the final chemical, which is the dewatering oil. It impregnates the black oxide layer, displacing any moisture and creating a thin barrier of oil between the iron particles and the oxygen that wants to oxidise it and turn it into rust. Ten minutes in the oil gives about six months protection in an outside environment. If you keep them indoors and dry, then they pretty much last indefinitely. I think this makes black oxide ideal for things like tools and machine parts. The final step is to leave the parts to dry. If you're bothered about the aesthetic, then try and avoid touching them for about 45 minutes. 
If you're interested in getting one of these kits for yourself, I'll just give you a quick run through of how to get one. Unfortunately, the company that sells these kits only ships to the UK. If you're not based in the UK, I'm sure if you have a quick look around on the internet, you'll be able to find a similar kit in your country. The website for the company that sells the kits is black-it.co.uk. I'll put a link in the video description. Since this is a commercial product and they tend to sell direct to industry, they don't have an online shop. So what you need to do is either email them and then pay through PayPal, or by far the easiest is to just pick up the phone and give them a call. All this information is available on their website, but if you do decide to get a kit, if you give them the code HE2020, you'll get a 5% discount. There are three different size kits available. The one I've been using in this video is the 0.5 litre kit, which is the smallest, and it's ideal for jobs around the home workshop and just giving it a try, to be honest. I think with the discount, it's priced just under £40 delivered to the UK. The offer is valid until the end of 2021. And thanks for watching.